Hey guys, it's Razor. Welcome to episode 11 of my Let's Play. Well, uh, as we left off last time, uh, doing a lot of research uh, in Thumbcraft. Well, I've spent probably a couple of more hours doing more research. And if we take a look at the Thalmanomicon here, you can see all the stuff that I've accomplished here. Quite a bit of research done. So, um, a lot of stuff we can create here. I went ahead and created a couple of items, um, basically out of necessity. Uh, after I unlocked the uh, wand of excavation, which I was wanting, I went ahead and created that. And it's pretty simple, just uh, three earth shards and this uh, the wand of the apprentice and the infusion altar over there. And, uh, and this thing is pretty awesome. The other thing I did is created one of these Alembics, it's called. And uh, one of these jars to store the uh, Essentia. And uh, I'll get into more of that in just a bit. Uh, if you haven't seen this Wand of Excavation, let me show it to you really quick. Um, basically, you just point it what you want. Um, right click it. And it just zaps it. Really, really cool. Great for uh, mining. Especially... Um, uh, strip mining or whatever um, which is basically what I did that's the reason I uh, that's the reason I uh, went ahead and created it off camera uh, you can see down there in my inventory um, that this thing is almost done uh, I've just about used it up I spent a lot of time mining because we were basically out of a lot of resources mainly diamonds uh, so that really helps a lot in finding diamonds. So I was able to find, I actually found 20 diamonds. I used one already. Uh, so it was cool. All right, well, I had some already, so a little less than 20 diamonds. About three or four veins of diamonds, which was really awesome. Um, so I want to move away from Thomcraft for a minute, but I want to do one thing first. I want to go ahead and create the uh, Goggles of Revealing. Um, right here, these things allow you to see if some things in the world that you can't normally see in Thomcraft. So let's see how do we create those. We just need some leather, some gold, and these thermometers. And uh, the thermometer is just more gold and a water shard. So we need two of those. Uh, let's see, do I have any gold? I think I have the gold to go down here. So we're going to need two of those plus some other. I think I have some in here. That's probably not enough. Yeah, let's take it all. I don't know how much we need. Um, let's see. What was it? Thermometer. Oh yeah, the water shard. Four. So eight total. Yeah, let's see. Two water shards. So there we go. Two thermometers. And then the, uh, the actual goggles themselves. Four leather, two more gold. Got some leather in here, yep. Four leather. So it's the gold like this. There we go. And now we just need some flux. The eight flux, eight of the magic, eight of the the site. Okay. Well, let's see for the magic. Might as well just use eight more of the great wood logs because the other thing I did was we had those uh, great wood log saplings um, from earlier, a few episodes ago. I went ahead and planted them and um, I planted one there and planted one over here. And I don't think it's grown yet, but it's right over in that area. So we'll have more of those to get more logs. So we need that. We need uh, 
That's the eight magic. The vision, I think carrots are good for that. Yeah, so we need eight of that. So four of those. And uh, what was the other one? Oh, here. Uh, oh, yeah, the flux. Eight flux. So that's going to be nether wart. So we need eight nether wart. Okay. Got a bucket here. And um, what this Alembic is, let me show it to you in the uh, in the Thaumonomicon here. Basically when you unlock, I think it's, I think it's this one. No. What is it? When you unlock it. Let's see. Okay, must be this. Basic Flux Research. Yeah, the Basic Flux Research, when you unlock that, gives you the ability to create these flux filters. And that's just a silverwood log and some gold. And once you have the filter, you can then cre use it to create the um, Arcane Alembic. And uh, basically, that is just a filter uh, system you put on your crucible that will allow you to capture any uh, leftover uh, essentia instead of throwing it out into the environment and I think you can put up to four of these so one on each side of your crucible so I built just one for now and I did something already I think when I created that wand that created some leftover something or another um, something green when we create their goggles we'll be able to see what that is so that's going to be cool. Alright, so let's put our stuff in here. Um, magic. Vision. Chaos. Let's see if we have enough stuff. No. Why do we not have enough stuff? So I'll put eight logs. Oh, we do have enough stuff. Derp. Where's the wand? There we go. Goggles of revealing. Now, if you notice over here, I took that out. It picked, I guess, at random one of these uh, the essentias and put it in this alembic. I think if we had more of those, it would have extracted even more uh, different types out of there. So if we put these goggles on, nice and stylish, then uh, we can start to see, you look there, what that is in that jar, is that whatever that tree stuff is, I can't remember. And over here is the fire. So next time we need fire or this tree uh, essentia um, the table here can pull it from these jars so the way you extract it out here is you need one of these vials uh, which I've already created some glass vials um, those are are created just like a, a glass bottle except it has a piece of clay on the top uh, slot so Anyway, you take with a glass vial and um, just right click it. And so now here, the um, the fire sent you, the Ignis sent you. And then a warded jar is what this guy is called. And if we look in the Vamanamakan, the warded jar is here. And that's created with just an arcane wood block and uh, some glass panes and that's just created in the work table so we can have enough to create one more of those or did I already create one uh, no and do I not have any glass panes probably not oh well I'm not gonna spend any more time on that uh, what you do is once you have the the jar you just take the vial and right click on it 
So for now, I'm just going to store this jar here. You can keep them in there, or the vials, rather. Um, and because uh, I want to move on, I want to move on to some other stuff. Um, oh, and if you notice out here, because I have the goggles on, we can see more stuff. And there's a node right there. Uh, one other thing I want to do, real quick before we start on the other stuff, is you remember that? Uh, do I have my jetpack on? Yeah. You remember that? Um, little dungeon, Thomcraft dungeon that we found. It's out here somewhere. I think. I thought it was just right over here. I don't see it. It's back this way. Hmm. Let me find it and I'll, I'll be right back. Oh, never mind. There it is here. I have to have my render distance set down a little bit low so that we can get some decent frame rates. So here we go. I have my uh, boots on. Yeah, long fall boots. Um, if you look inside here, we've got another node right in the middle there. So... That's the other thing that we couldn't see last time. So, I think those lightning bolts coming out of there, I don't know exactly what that means, but I think it means that there's some flux in the air, and it's a little bit angry. <laughs> I don't know. I know that there's some red ones, and I don't know if it's just because one of these gets uh, turned kind of bad from the flux in the air, or if it's a di actually a different type of node. So... Got, got a lot to learn still about Thomcraft, but uh, uh, we're going to come tackle this thing pretty soon. Uh, it's not what I want to do today, though. Um, what I want to do today is I want to do some stuff with our machines. So let me get um, let me get situated down in the basement there with all the stuff that we need. And um, oh, and by the way, even though we have a node there. We have a note. We should have a node inside this tree as well. I think every time you plant a tree, uh, one of these silverwood trees, you, there's an automatic node inside of it. If we were to cut it down, um, so that's pretty cool. We got a couple of nodes real close to our house, so those help uh, balance out the the aura and get rid of some of the flux in the air. I think. So anyway, let me get situated and I will be right back. Okay, real quick, uh, before we get started, I did find the glass panes. They were in this chest, and I also have an arcane wood block available, so I wanted to go ahead and create one of those warding jars real quick so I can store that stuff, see how that works. Um, just do like this, and we need our wand in there. I should create another wand at some point. So there's a water jar. And so if we just place this thing over here, and we can right click it, and there's our fire in there. And uh, it's pretty cool. Later on, we can get some golem workers to help us keep these vials filled up and keep the water filled up in the crucible. A bunch of cool stuff we can get to. So um, we'll get back to Thumbcraft in a future episode. Um, but I want to do some other stuff, and what I'm going to do is, I'm getting tired of these, um, pipes exploding. They exploded on me at least one more time since our last recording, and, um, I want to exchange these out for the new Thomcraft, or not Thomcraft, the new uh, Thermal Expansion Energy Conduits. And um, take a look here. The energy conduit, redstone energy conduits. There's the empty one. Click on that guy. It's created with just the electrum uh, ingots and the hardened glass. Um, now the thing is, once it's created, 
uh, you have to then fill it up with liquid redstone. And we need a liquid transposer to do that. And um, we also need a magma crucible, I think, to actually melt the redstone. So, magma crucible is here. Uh, it's not too bad. We have some nether brick. The redstone reception coil is just that. Um, and then the machine frame we've built before. It's just iron, glass, and gold. So, let me get that stuff built and uh, we'll put together the magma crucible. Um, and I already have already been kind of working on this getting them supplies together I already have some hardened glass and some electrum ingots so then we have the gold here we have they have the iron uh, so we're just about ready to do this uh, let's see for the machine frame gold oh let's see if I have the glass I don't know if I have the glass or not I have five let me go cook up some more glass and get this stuff together and then I'll be right back. Hey guys, I think I have enough stuff together to build this thing. Uh, we need a liquid transposer which is almost identical to the magma crucible except it uses glass on the sides. So we need a couple machine frames. Uh, so let's build that. Uh, let's build those redstone. Oops. So we need two of these, and then for the machine frame, glass, iron, and gold. So glass, iron, gold, we we'll need two of them, and then only two buckets. Some glass. I got the nether brick here. Uh, let's see, I've got one bucket here. Let's create one more bucket. Alright, so a bucket here. Machine frame. Glass. And uh, what was it? Oh, yeah, copper. Okay, there's a liquid transposer. And then the same thing for the magma crucible. So we have these guys. And the bucket, magma crucible. Cool. So now we need to get these guys hooked up. So what I think I want to do here, most of these machines require power, except for this guy here. So what I want to do, if you know, if you hold down shift and right click, it'll just remove those guys and um, I'm gonna take him off of there and I'll place it back down in a minute so we really don't want or need this machine the smelter I don't think connected to either one of them uh, so we might as well just set the output to nothing on this side of that so I guess it really doesn't matter which one first. So let's put the magma crystal, the transposer, and then finally we'll just stick this guy on the end. And uh, see, I grabbed some golden conductive pipes. So one here, one here. So we need, because we'll need power before we can even create the other pipes to replace those pipes. So. Uh, let's see, magma crystal is already filling up a little bit, but I need some more power. And the reason I want to replace these is because those uh, energy conduits won't explode, and these uh, biogas engines are not smart enough to scale back and keep from exploding, uh, keep from overdriving these pipes. Um, so eventually we're going to have to get some some automation to take care of that uh, so that when there's no power needed we can turn those in, engines off automatically so how are we doing over here 
All right, so I think we just plop some redstone in there. Um, not the liquid transposer, magma crucible. Let's see if this thing's configured right. I don't want it outputting anything. I don't think. Actually, I do want it outputting to the liquid transposer. I think I'm going to I think I'm going to wait and have it have it do it when I want it to though. Don't know if that really makes that much difference. Let's just get it going first. So we stick some redstone in here. I don't know how much. Let's just start with like 30. Hey, it goes pretty fast. So each redstone's 25. I guess that's mellow buckets. Okay, cool. Let's let that run for a minute. And meanwhile, we'll build those energy conduits. So we need... Oh, I already grabbed that stuff. And I think those are just... Just this. And let's see, how many do we need? It's probably... At least uh, 16, 24 or so. And I need to run one back over here to supply some power to that. So, start out with... Uh, oops. Or let's start out with 24. See where that gets us. Before I do, need to fill them up. Is it dark enough for me to go sleep and get rid of that thunderstorm? Yeah, let me get rid of that. Be right back. Okay, wow, this uh, magma crucible is really sucking down the energy. Two of these can't keep up. Let me fire up the third one, but I think... I don't think the liquid transposer is going to take this much. So let's see... Let's see if I pop the output. There it goes, it drained over to the, the transposer. And it's in bucket fill mode. So if I put one of these, I think it'll fill it up. Yeah, there we go. Redstone energy conduit. So let's see how many it'll fill up. Okay. Well, that's enough to get started. We're going to need more. And it looks like we're going to need more power. So I'm going to turn this on. See if this starts filling up. Yeah, it's starting to. Okay. Yeah, this is filling up. So, okay, each one takes 50. Those millibuckets or whatever. Micro buckets. Whatever that is. So we need at least enough of these to, to go all the way around here. We want two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine second. Nine ten. Yeah. We almost have enough. Let's go ahead and let those final few fill up. Probably gonna need some more. Well we will need some more in the future anyway. 
The other thing I want to create is a, um, what do you call it? An energy, this energy cell. And I think this is basically just a battery for the redstone energy. Um, whereas these are the conduits, this is like a battery. And to create this cell, you need more electrum, lead, redstone, pipe again. Um, but to create, let's see, we need energy cell frame. And that's an energy, empty energy cell frame, also filled up with redstone. Energy cell frame takes a diamond. Okay. So let's create one of those. So four hardened glass and the electrum with a diamond. Do I have enough? Looks like I do. And... Yeah, see, I had a diamond here. I knew I had a diamond for some reason. So the energy cell frame. And that. Combined with more electrum lead in this. So let's... Uh, I'm going to need some more redstone. We're going to get some redstone. I'll be right back. And it looks like we finished up. We still have some redstone left over here. Uh, I'm actually going to create... Uh, Oops, always do that. Um, I'm going to throw some more redstone in there. I don't know how much these guys hold. I have a feeling it's a lot. I'm going to throw some more in the uh, magma crucible. Let it start up. And um, I'm going to have to keep an eye on that because I don't know if it needs... Yeah, it's kind of draining a little bit, so thing really sucks the power. All right, let's create this, uh, this energy cell. So we need one of these guys. Uh, here's the frame. Put that out of there. Frame. Electron lead. Okay. Got some lead here. Uh, Electrum. And, oh, we need to fill it up first, not, we don't need the frame. Oh, I see. We need, still need the frame, but you fill it up first, so it's an energy cell frame full. Okay, well, we can do that. So, how are we doing over here? Let's see how much this guy's going to hold. I guess it takes it in, fills it up, so you don't get to really see it. There we go, energy cell frame. And I'm going to shut these off because I don't want it to generate any more power and blowing up on us. So now we have a full one in there. And what are we doing wrong here? Lead? Redstone conductors? Oh! I made the wrong... Uh, type of coal. It needs to be an electrum one. Okay. This is just a redstone reception coal. Okay, let's go over here. Let's see what do we need. Uh, redstone. Oh. The electrum. There we go. Redstone conductance coal. There we go. Redstone energy cell. Cool. Cost a diamond, but these things are worth it. They hold a lot of energy. So, 
and it'll work kind of like a buffer. So if I leave these engines on too long, yeah, it'll just fill up this energy cell. It won't, um, you know, just waste the energy. So I think we're done with what we need from over here. So we can go ahead and break all these pipes down. And we don't even need the wooden ones. May rearrange this somewhat at some point, but right now I just want to get these working. Let's see if this is going to be enough. Here. Okay. We'll just keep running this. I'm going to run it to the machines first. And then I will tell you what, why don't I Oops. maybe take it down. There we go. Nice. And then there we go. Alright, so these need to be set to be output, I think. Like this. I think that's basically like a little arrow. So that's going down. And that's going up so that's energy flowing out so and then all of these are receiving energy so they're all blue okay so uh, one thing I want to do is I want to put our energy <clears throat> excuse me our uh, energy cell in the middle here somewhere so it's right here I guess and then yeah, this is going in. So this one will also be output that. So let's fire these things up and see what happens. Oops. So we should start to see energy flowing into this. If I have it all right. Or maybe not. energy flowing in here well yeah it's working got stuff all over the place so are these guys these were already full I think is this filling up yeah so maybe until those are full this is not gonna start storing energy which makes sense So there we go, that one's full, that one's full, now is it storing? There it goes, cool. So now if I leave those guys on for a little bit, this will start storing it up. And I can even shut them down later and have this fuel them all except kind of made a mistake here I need this right here to go this way there and this be output that way if I turn the engines off and there's power left in this it can still power everything 
So cool. The other nice thing about these is if I if I take it off, like right now it has uh, 1,500 or 15,000, 16,000 or so. If I take this off, oops, shift, uh, you can still let's see. Can you tell from here? No. Put it back down and look. It's still got, it still retained it, so it's still climbing again. So that's cool. Oh, these guys even remembered what they were set to. And so the reason I like this setup is because these uh, uh, biogas engines are really, really efficient. And they each output uh, five uh, Minecraft jewels each. So they're one of the most powerful engines you can get uh, besides maybe the combustion engine. Uh, I'm not sure. I think maybe it's six or something. I don't know. But, um, and these guys don't use a whole lot of fuel. I mean, I don't have any, you know, any saplings in here. This is not generating any more fuel. And this will just sit here and sip on this fuel. It just doesn't really use a whole lot. But it provides a lot of power. Now, I don't know if that little tank right there is enough to fill that up. I mean, that's a lot. 600,000. So, my next order of business is to replace this tank. And what I want to do is I want to replace this tank with um, those nice Billcraft, or not Billcraft, uh, Railcraft tanks. The big iron tanks uh, holds a ton of liquid, <laughs> and then basically I can just set this. Uh, probably just I don't know if I need more than one of these uh, fermenters, but I can just set this thing going, filling up that tank, and then the next step is to find some way to automate this and. Uh, right now, uh, what I've been doing is just going and cutting down saplings and or cutting down trees to get the saplings myself and putting them in here, because you know a stack of saplings. I mean, this doesn't even take a stack of saplings to fill this guy, up, and it lasts quite a while. So maybe an automated tree farm or something we can get set up pretty soon. Uh, help us out with that. So. Um, So, I have a feeling this episode is getting pretty long. This is a good wrapping up point anyway. Uh, basically, I got everything accomplished I wanted to for this one. And uh, these uh, these energy conduits are really, really nice. Um, no more explosions. Got us a nice, basically, a battery going here. These machines will always stay powered. And, uh, and uh, this will be... This will be awesome. Um, got to think about what I want to do next. We got a lot of stuff to do. We need to get some resource, uh, some more resources coming in. Um, I'm getting a little bit tired of mining, uh, even though I do have the wand now. Uh, makes it easier, but uh, I want to get a quarry or something going and get some uh, resources collected here. Uh, maybe start start on a sorting system at some point here in, uh, in the next few episodes. So. Got a lot of stuff to do, guys. So, anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.